All right, so this is the uh, VRM cart. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what model it is or what vintage it is, but uh, it's uh, mostly complete and together. Um, I have uh, tires and that sort of thing that need to be mounted. Seats just kind of sitting here, happily, but uh, that's going to happen. I've actually already mounted a brake master cylinder on there, and I was just uh, working out the uh, brake caliper. Uh, unfortunately, I need some longer bolts, and um, I'm doing everything in metric just to keep with the fact that this is an Italian frame, and everything else is in metric. So Home Depot and local retailers like that are pretty limited on their selection of metric bolts, so I'm going to find a fastener supply place to work out the rest of that and uh, I'll probably do a video on that as well so you can see how that comes together. Um, I'm using a standard caliper and a standard brake master cylinder. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't line up with the bolt holes that were on this thing. So I've had to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of adjustments, making some holes here and there just to do the mounting. So anyway, that's our cart. And I'm going to mount this with a bulldog mount. So this uh, this came to me as a gift, and it's a fantastic mount. It is anodized solid blocks of aluminum with uh, the appropriate mounting holes and the, the machine to fit on the actual bars itself. So um, just two bolts to remove it from below, Allen keys, and uh, the bolts for mounting the engine uh, on top of that. So there is a reason why this is uh, smaller in the front and bigger in the rear. Um, I believe this is a 15 degree mount. Um, they're worth about $80, I think. You can get them on most cart stores and or build your own or fabricate something. There's a number of people that just put a plate here and put some clips and then, then attach the motor to the plate. This uh, is, is good because it, uh, like I said, holds the motor at 15 degrees. You can get uh, five degree ones as well, I believe. Um, the sole purpose of which, I believe, is just to make it so that the engine's air intake and that sort of thing will clear the tires, which would sit right about here. So with your engine mounted here, stuff kind of gets in the way. So by tilting it up like that, uh, elevates the engine and uh, perhaps gives you some advantage uh, through acceleration and deceleration in, in terms of where the oil is sitting in the crank. So uh, in the crankcase, I should say. So we will get that going and get that mounted. I think a good first step, I'm learning here as I do this, the first time I've done this, so learn with me here. Um, probably want to see where the, uh, the engine is going to sit. So this, this, this clamping piece here on the bottom of the mount only goes in one position. Uh, however, there are mounting holes off to either the left or right of that. So with this one in the front, you can either move it more outboard or more inboard. And uh, I think I'm going to opt for more inboard, but let's just put the engine there and see where it sits. So let's see here. Yeah, I can see where that needs to be up. So, crank sitting there. Yeah, we're pretty well on the outside of those bars, so yeah, it's going to have to be mounted outboard. so that it's uh, clearing the seat support and it's going to get the clutch in line with uh, with the sprocket. I think the best thing to do would actually would be to fix this to the bottom of the motor and then you don't need to worry about the placement of it. You just put in the bottom pieces from there. Alright, so we've got our motor here. I'm just going to tip it on the side now. You can do all this because there's no oil or anything in it. It's brand new. We will just uh, hang on tighten. Get those lined up. All right, let's see if this works. So there's our mounts. See where this is going to sit. So we've got it fairly close there. This has got to be mounted a little more forward. Yeah, and that's going to work for me there, I think. Alright, I'm going 
gonna go back and just finish up the mount bolts with my half inch. So you can see that here. That's in. Okay, so we're ready to fire this up, and I think I understand why they don't use the uh, stock gas tank <laughs> if it's on that 15 degree angle. The fuel pickup is down here, so you know, you, you got like almost half the tank, uh, which is unusable, so you have to fill that thing all the way up and only have half fuel capacity. So that's why they would use this style of tank here. Uh, with a uh, pump system. All right, I am ready to go ahead and put oil in this thing. And uh, as I said, there's two filler holes. Now, the, the clone manual doesn't say how much oil to put in there, only to fill it up to the so that it's visible in the filler hole. Of course, with it being on this angle, that would mean if you were looking on this side, it would uh, you know have no oil in it and be up to the filler hole. And if you were on this side, then it would have uh, a whole ton of oil in it and look like there was none. Uh, in the uh, on the forums and just checking the uh, the actual Honda manual for the GX200, it says 0.6 liters. So we're gonna go 0.6 liters. I'm gonna add a little more. Let's go 700 milliliters of oil, or about uh, about 0.75 of a quart. Now, depending on the temperature in your area, it's uh, winter here in Vancouver. Temperatures are running about zero to five degrees uh, typically. Um, and so I probably use 1030. What I've got on hand is a 1040. This is a Motomaster. It's bought at Canadian Tire, which is you know the equivalent of Walmart here, and it's uh, you know not the highest quality stuff. But as I said, we're going to fill this up, break it in, do some uh, mods and adjustments to it. So this oil is not going to be in there very long, and I don't really want to you know uh, an oil with massive wear protection for the break in. After we get everything done, you know when it's on its final oil fill that I'm going to run with for a while, I'll put in some. Uh, some 050 or 2050 synthetic or something like that, full synthetic. Anyway, so 1040, and I can use this handy dandy oil filler. And what this has is a little valve at the bottom that allows you to fill, fill up to the required oil amount, pop the end in, and then uh, open it and close it at, at will. So you can uh, make sure that it's got exactly the right amount in there. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, pop the crankcase plug and there's actually oil on there but I imagine they just threw some in there for a startup at the factory which uh, is a good thing that means they actually tested it and it was probably working uh, and on this side uh, actually has the dipstick so uh, I'm not going to be checking it from the front because of the angle so I'm going to put the dipstick on this side and just put the bare plug which just looks like that uh, on the front of it because that one will never get opened. So we'll tighten that one up good. And uh, this way, we may not be even hitting the oil on the dipstick, but if it is, at least I can remember where the level is supposed to be. And we've got our handy dandy filler with uh, a nice small end on it, so I can just go ahead and plunk that right in there. I'm going to open my oil. And they said 0.6 of a liter. I'm gonna go 100 milliliters more. Just well, let's see where that ends up anyway. So nicely listed on there. So we're gonna go up to 700 anyway. All right, pulling that level without spilling, and then we just. Uh, Turn to open, and the oil should go down. All right, so that is drip clean. Use my handy closer there and close the valve. And so let's uh, get the flashlight and take a look. So we can see it just coming to the bottom of the filler nozzle in here. So it's just coming up to where the threads start, or just slightly below where the threads start in that hole. So I don't think having the uh, dip stick in there is going to make a difference, but uh, let's see what we got. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it just shows uh, uh, just on the end, on the L that indicates the low. I don't know if you can see that there, but it uh, uh, it's just a just a drop of oil on the end of that dipstick. So that's where it's got to be tilted at that angle. So we'll know that for future. All right, so that is oil in, and. And we have our fuel. All right, so let's go fuel this bad boy up. Use all the fuel we can, just to make sure we're hitting that pickup. Hopefully that's going to be enough. Yep, pickup is submerged. So we're good. Let's move this right into there. 